It was a weekday in March 2010. Walter Labrus was working as usual in this popular bar in Montevideo's historic district when he saw an unexpected customer walking in. A week after taking office, Mujica came in to have lunch. The president sat down with two government aides and ordered Creole beef and some wine. There was no security in sight. It's not every day that you see a president who eats at a bar. He must be the only one in this country, and I think in the world. He is modest, a normal person, like me. El Pepe, as he's affectionately known in Uruguay, had always led a humble lifestyle and continued to do so as president. He shunned the presidential residence, preferring instead to remain on his small farm in a rural area of Montevideo. He never wears a tie, his car is a 1987 Volkswagen, and he donates 89% of his salary to charity, earning him the title of the world's poorest president. I'm living comfortably. I don't want to complicate my life. I'm not making the case for poverty or say the world should go back to the Stone Age or anything like that. I'm against frivolousness and silliness. A former guerrilla fighter, Mujica was captured in 1972 and spent 14 years in prison until the end of the dictatorship. He used much of his presidency to advocate international peace and human rights. He welcomed Syrian refugees and said Uruguay was ready to accept six detainees from the U.S. Guantanamo prison. But he will be especially remembered for making Uruguay the first country in the world to legalize the cultivation, sale and use of marijuana in an attempt to undermine illegal drug trafficking. If I say no and create mystery, it's guaranteed that they'll try it. All that is forbidden is attractive. Though Mujica is credited with bringing international fame and prestige to the small and often forgotten Latin American nation, his efficiency as a doer has sometimes been questioned, particularly in the education sector where he failed to implement promised reforms. His approval rate at the end of his mandate is 56 percent, lower than that of his predecessor Tabari Vasquez. The problem of Mujica is that he promised too many things that he wasn't able to fulfill. If one goes over Mujica's five-year government, one would say that he did little or nothing. Mujica says he has no intention of running for president again, but he has another project in mind, turn his farmhouse into a school to teach poor children from rural areas, continuing on a small scale a plan that was difficult to implement nationwide.